Grace and peace, grace and peace. This is Bishop Martin Wilson. Thank you so much for joining. So glad to have you with us. This is a free class that I wanted to put out for um, our Ecclesia Episcopal College that we have. This will actually be module number um, number nine in the Shepherdology class that we have. We have a class that right now, Shepherdology class, where we're uh, taking uh, those that will be ordained elders at our 2019 Holy Convocation in July that will be taking place in Birmingham, Alabama. So I uh, wanted to share this class because I know there's some leaders out there that may have those that are going to be coming into eldership, or uh, we also have a class that is specifically for overseers, and we also have a class for bishops, which is a catechism class. Uh, and they can go through those classes. All those classes are online. You can actually take the classes directly on your phone. Uh, some of them are audios, some of them are videos like this. Some of them are written where they have to read the material and all of the um, lessons have a test that go along with it. So I wanted to share this one today um, so that we could uh, just put out just some, some new material and also give those that may be interested in the Episcopal College uh, a taste of what we do, if you will. Um, so we ask that you join us. We're going to be uh, dealing with the subject, uh, the 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. This is a summary from a book by uh, Dr. John C. Maxwell. And Dr. John C. Maxwell, he's like one of my favorite all-time thought leaders uh, he published this book, and uh, about a about a year ago now, I think it was that he published this book, and it's it's a great um, playbook, if you will, for those that are really interested in personal growth, and and, I, and I've come to find out that so many times in ministry we have people who are great preachers, and they can dissect the word very well but they're not good with people. And it's so important that we as leaders make sure that we're developing our people skills and you can never develop your people skills unless you first develop yourself. And we're going to look at that and we're going to look at these 15 laws just real quickly. I don't want to uh, drag this out. Um, matter of fact, in the class, those of you that are part of the class, this may be two parts, just giving you a heads up, but I'm going to teach it all here so that we'll have it. Now, uh, the first law, and this is broken down, each, each law is broken down into uh, a particular law. So there's 15 that we're going to go through. Uh, and number one is the law of intentionality. The law of intentionality. Growth doesn't just happen. Uh, I, I see so many people who want to be great preachers, want to be great leaders, but they don't invest the time that is needed for them to develop themselves. They don't, I, I, I ask, one of the questions that I often ask leaders and preachers, what good book are you reading? If you're a leader and you're not reading, then you're really not leading. There may be a few people that will follow you that are like you, but you will never attract other real leaders to yourself. And the moment that you get up and you open up your mouth, we'll understand what kind of leader you are because growth is intentional. It's very intentional. You must be intentional about your growth. And as pastors, not only are we intentional about our growth, we're intentional about our growth because we understand that other people's growth is predicated on me growing myself. I can't take people anywhere that I haven't been. And you'll hear that again in uh, this teaching today. Law number two is the law of awareness. The law of awareness. Uh, and that what the law of awareness says is you must know yourself to grow. You've got to know yourself to grow. I've come to find out that so many of us are in denial about who we are, where we are, and we've got a false sense of where we're going. Because if you don't know where you are and you really don't know who you are, then you, your destination is probably very 
cloudy. The first step to changing is awareness. You've got to become aware of the areas in your life that you want to change before you will be able to change them. And as long as you stay in this place of denial, uh, you know, I've got it all together. Uh, but guess what? One thing that, that if you ever want to know where you're at, please remember this. And I say it often in those that, that follow my teaching, you know, results do not lie. Results do not lie. If you're a, if you're a leader, you're a reader. If you're a reader, you're a leader. If you're not a reader, then you have to understand that is a result that you're producing and your results do not lie. You've got to know your self. And the way that you know yourself is by looking at the results that you're getting and asking yourself and being honest with yourself, am I producing in my life the results that I want or do I need to begin to change some things? Law number three is the law of the mirror. The law of the mirror. And the law of the mirror says you must see value in yourself before you can add value to other people. You must see value in yourself before you can add value to other people. Listen, uh, we, we treat people the way we treat ourselves. That's why the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. And the underlying principle is there that you're going to treat other people the way you feel about yourself. If you're a person that really doesn't like yourself, really, uh, you're not happy with your life, you're not happy with the way things are going in your life, then it's going to be very hard for you as a leader to pour into other people. It's so easy for me to pour into other people and to get nuggets and share those nuggets and, and put out these videos and just share information. Why? Because I'm confident in who I am. I don't have to hoard the information. I, I, I've um, I branded myself as an infineur. I love to get information. I love to share information so that I can help others to grow. So to, you've got to first see the value in yourself before you'll be able to add value to other people. A lot of people are trying to sell all the information and sell all the videos and sell everything. And there's no problem with that, but there's gotta be something that you give away. Stop comparing yourself to other people is another thing that you have to understand when it comes to the law of the mirror. Do not compare yourself to other people. One of the greatest lessons that I ever learned that come from uh, Bishop Eric Garns is he told me one time, he said, every time you compare yourself to someone else, you come away feeling less than. And some of you ministers, pastors, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. You look at your ministry, then you go and you visit another ministry and that ministry has everything seemingly is in place. Everything's going well. They got the staff. They get, seem to have the finances that they need. And then you go back and you see your ministry and you feel less than. But you've got to understand that they pay the price to get what they have, and you've got to be willing to pay that price. But one thing that will distract you and get you off course and have a lot of things in your spirit that can really keep you. See, I, I often tell pastors, you can't look at a Stephen Furtick and downgrade uh, larger ministries or mega ministries and think that you're able, that you're going to be able to grow your ministry. Why would I want my ministry to grow and I'm downing and talking negative about ministries that are already growing? They're not saved. You don't know who's saved. You know, the Bible said, well, we know a tree by the fruit that it bear. Well, have you even been there to find out? See, we, we, we say these things and what we don't realize is we're snaring ourselves. We're slowing our process. We're slowing the spiritual momentum that we could be putting forth to build our own ministries by putting down everybody else. You must see value in yourself before you will add value to others. Do not compare yourself to anybody. And the last thing, a part of that law of the mirror is don't, you have to limit your own negative self-talk. Usually when you find people who speak negative about other people, you're only hearing a small portion of the negativity that's really on the inside of them that they're saying about their self. I'm dumb. I'm stupid. I never. And I, you know, if it wasn't for this, I, all that negative talk, you've got to shut it down. If you're wanting to grow, part of the law of the mirror is you have to limit the self 
talk, the, the negative self-talk of the things that you're saying about yourself. Number four, law number four, law of reflection. Law of reflection. You've got to learn to pause to allow growth to catch up with you. You can't have a victory and just keep shooting, keep going, going, going. Enjoy the victory. Pause. Allow success. Allow growth to catch up with you, to keep up with you. Uh, Peter uh, Drucker, he said, uh, follow effective actions with quiet reflection. From the quiet reflection will come even more effective action. Let me say that again. Follow effective action with quiet reflection. From that quiet reflection will come even more effective action. There's something about, as a leader, there's something about getting quiet and reflecting. Even what I've learned of the service that we're having, we're just a new ministry, very small, uh, just starting our ministry back up. But one thing that I do is I take time and reflect on the message, reflect on the altar call. Was the altar call effective? And your results don't lie. Your results do not lie. You've got to learn to look at the results that you're getting and be really honest with yourself. Um, I was in a service just this weekend and, um, a, a great opportunity was missed because of the person's inability to give effect, uh, an effective altar call. Literally, hundreds could have been saved if the right person would have been up to being able to do an effective altar call. So you've got to uh, always have that time of reflection where you stop and you look back so that you can be prepared for the next opportunity that avails itself. Number five, the law of consistency. Motivation gets you going. We're motivated. We're happy. We're excited. Motivation will get you going. But you've got to understand that discipline keeps you growing. Motivation will get you going, but discipline is what keeps you going. A lot of people don't understand the importance of having discipline. It's not good enough to start something. When I started this Episcopal school and Episcopal college, and we started getting students in, uh, when, when it was time for the 2018 class to graduate, I became kind of discouraged because I'm thinking, oh my goodness, how, how, can, I, how can I get more students in? I had put so much into the class that I'd never thought about that the class was going to end. So I had to be consistent in the marketing. I had to be consistent, even while the one class is going on, I had to be consistent in the marketing techniques to keep people interested. So motivation will get you going, but it will always be discipline that keeps you growing. Uh, I see one of my good friends that just came on, Daryl Perkins, and we, we and we used to wrestle in in um, high school, and that was one of the things that at the beginning of the year you were very motivated. The beginning of the of the uh, wrestling season you were very motivated, but it was the discipline. Those that had discipline, because there were so many that started that didn't finish. So motivation will get you going, but it will be the discipline that keeps you growing. Discipline is a good habit that leads to success. Discipline develops good habits that leads to success. So you've got to develop those habits. Um, one of the things that I've come to learn when, it come, when we're talking about success 80% of success is just showing up. 80% of success is showing up. Some people just don't show up. And you can beat them pretty easily just by being consistent in showing up. Whatever it is, just show up. Be consistent. If you start something, make sure you're willing to see it through so that you can see it to the end. 